Hi guys, this is Tash. How are you all going? I hope you're well. Um, it's like the 5th of January and I haven't made a video since about the 5th of December. So I'm sorry, I'm really far behind, but it's been a busy time for everyone, I'm sure. I hope you all had a great Christmas, if you celebrate it, the holiday season, New Year's. Um, we had a lovely time. <laughs> um, I went down to, I went up to um, Wiseman's Ferry, which is north of Sydney on the Hawkesbury River, um, with my family and Tim's family. And we went out on my dad's boat. Um, just had a nice family time. Opened lots of presents, ate lots of food, drank lots of booze, um, made friends, had some phone calls to London to talk to Tim's sister and Germany to talk to my brother. And yeah, it was a lovely time. Um, it was really, well, Christmas Eve, we were on the boat all day. It was 41 degrees that day. I think that's about 106 um, degrees Fahrenheit. Um, and then Christmas Day was down, it was really cold. It was like 21 degrees, it was cold. Um, and it hasn't been too hot yet this summer, but this weekend, like as in tomorrow, we're heading for 38 degree weekend. So it's gonna be super fun. I do not like the heat. Um, yeah, but didn't do much for New Year's. I just stayed here. I was supposed to be going up to Sydney to bring in the New Year's with some old school friends that I actually haven't seen for five years or something. And I've only seen them once or twice since school even ended 15 years ago. Oh my God, I'm so old. Um, but I ended up having to babysit my nephew. He stayed here at our house and he fell asleep before midnight. And I, I think I was awake at midnight, but I wasn't paying attention. <laughs> um, yeah, I had a message from a friend that her husband, this was about 10 to midnight. She meant, oh, maybe 11 o'clock. She messaged me and she said, my husband's just left me. He's been cheating on me with a girl he met on Tinder a year ago. Um, and he's decided to bring in the new year, new year with her and he's left me. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, drama. Jeez, hard, hard, yeah. It's hard to know what to say in that situation. Um, anyway, I was gonna do the year in review tag um, on New Year's Eve morning. I actually started to film a video, um, but I was coughing a lot. I was sick just before Christmas. I was coughing so much that morning. I couldn't even keep filming. So I didn't do it. I'd already written all my answers down, like, it's a long tag guys, look at this. Um, but I'm not going to do it because it was boring. <laughs> I, I watched back my video and I just wasn't interested in what I was saying. So I'm not going to do the whole tag, I'm just going to give you a few quick stats. So at the beginning of the year on January 1st, I had 26 whips. And when I started the year, the goal, some of the goals I made were, um, I wanted to finish Firefly Fairies, which I did. I wanted to finish um, a few other things. And I finished all of them except for um, the Little Silk Gauze Kit and the Beautiful Sea Stitch Along. Um, but all the other ones that I said I wanted to finish, I did finish. Oh, and on Gamer, I wanted to finish three pages, but I've only done one and a half. Um, and the <laughs> I also wanted to fully finish and give to my nephew the Paddington Bear. Um, the four Paddington Bear little kits, and I did that. And then the other <laughs> um, weird requirements for the year I gave myself were don't start another Heaven and Earth design or full coverage sort of design, and don't start Death by Cross Stitch. So I passed both of those. I actually hadn't even remembered that Death by Cross Stitch, um, I wasn't supposed to start it because I would have started it this year if, if the fabric I had was big enough. And I was going to start it over one, and it would have been big enough. Um, so yeah, I nearly broke that one, <laughs> only because I didn't remember I'd made that resolution. Um, the other resolution I had was that I wanted to finish the year with fewer whips than the start of the year. So I started the year with 26, and I finished the year with 30. So I failed that one, but if I hadn't done those six starts on January, uh, December 4th, I had six starts. If I hadn't done that, I actually would have finished the year with 24 whips, which is less than what I started the year with. <laughs> And the reason I made those six stars was really so that I'd have some things that were achievable to finish during Year of Whips, <laughs> pretty much. Um, so yeah, I did fail that one, but that's okay. I actually don't feel bad about it. I feel very differently about my whips now than I did this time last year. Um, I watched back my plans video for the beginning of 2017 and I said, oh, I want to get my whips down to about 12 ideally. Um, 
I'm just not comfortable with the amount of whips I have, etc, etc. But my philosophy has kind of changed this year and I have 30 and I don't feel bad about it. I'm okay with it. So yeah, we change. Change happens. It's not always a bad thing. <laughs> um, I had 45 starts in the year. Um, yeah, that's a lot. And I had 33 finishes, which is a huge amount. Guys, in my whole life, I haven't had 33 finishes until this year. Like, all the finishes in my whole life added up before this year. I didn't have 33. Um, yeah, this was a huge year for me. I think what really helped was the fact that I did New Year, New Start. No, not New Year. I did Year of Starts. Um, so on the, 8th, on the 17th of every month, I started a new thing. And when I chose what to start, I usually chose something that was smallish. Something that was achievable that I was pretty sure I would be able to finish within a week, at least by the end of the, that particular month. Um, and, you know, that was really good. It gave me a lot of FFOs because I did small things like Mill Hill ornaments. Um, a lot of extra finishes. It gave me gifts to give to people. Um, I really liked that. I think that it did distract from my bigger projects that I might have wanted to focus on. It did. Um, it probably took four or five days out of each month. Um, and I don't know if I'm going to keep doing that this year. I haven't decided yet. I will just see how I feel when I get to the day. Um, <clears throat> and I had 20 FFOs. Um, so yeah, that's amazing too because I don't generally FFO things. Um, I also figured out that out of my 33 finishes, 16 of them were made for other people. I didn't realise that I would have done that, but I did. Um, what else do I want to share with you? I'm going to skip most of these questions. I'm going to skip all of the questions. Um, but I did have some interesting statistics. I've been using a spreadsheet to track when I start and finish each whip, how much time I work on each whip um, per day. <laughs> um, and it's only approximate. I only round it to the nearest half hour. And just at the end of the evening, I say, okay, today I worked on um, Love and Wisdom and I did four hours, so I just type a four there. And at the end of the month, I can see how much time I spent stitching all together. And when I finish a whip, I can go back through the months and figure out how much time I spent on each whip, if I care. Um, but I did figure out that for the whole year, I stitched 1,170 and a half hours. That's pretty good. Um, so a little bit of uh, averaging out. That means that each day on average, I stitched 3.2 hours, which is pretty good. Um, but I actually missed 64 days. Um, just various reasons. Traveling, not feeling like stitching, that was quite a lot of them, unfortunately. Um, being busy with other commitments, you know, doing other things in the evening like helping people move or playing games with friends or things like that. So there were reasons, obviously. Um, so yeah, I stitched for 301 days of the year. Uh, my best month was January, because <laughs> probably because I was on holidays for most of it. And I actually think I spent a week, um, a week working from home because I was just studying. So I was able to stitch during a lot of the study breaks. Um, so in January, I did 123.5 hours. And in September and October, both, I only did 67 hours. And I think that part of that was because I moved in October, I think. September, maybe I was sick, I don't remember. But yeah, that was like a half of what I did in January for each of those months. So yeah, that was some interesting numbers. It was interesting to look back at my year and think about what's changed in my stitching. It was good. Um, so I'll tell you about what I've worked on since I saw you a month ago. Um, so yeah, when you saw me last, I had just made six new starts. I'm pretty crazy, I know. Um, one of the ones I started was Love and Wisdom by The Drawn Thread. I love this, it says, Wisdom tells me I am nothing, love tells me I am everything. And it's beautiful, I love it. Um, and I did work on this a little bit more after the last video. I've done the whole top, maybe it's a quarter of the top, just up to where it says Wisdom tells me I am nothing. Yep, maybe a quarter. So, but this only took me a few days to do. It took, oh, I've already closed last year's spreadsheet. You know, maybe 15 hours work. So pretty quick to stitch. I love it. It's beautiful. So many specialty stitches. 
There's a bunch of, let me see if I can, satin stitches up here. This is rice stitch. This is some sort of padded satin something. Very interesting. Uh, that's a octagonal pinwheel or something. That is a double back stitch and same there. That's the more octagonal pinwheel. That's a four-sided stitch. This is just um, double running stitch. And it's also reversible because I was practicing after working on my strawberry sampler. See? Exactly perfectly reversible. I love that. I'm so obsessed with, re with reversible back stitching now. So cool. So yeah, I worked on that. Um, I stopped there. Just, I don't know why. Just because. Oh, that is a, that one there. Something like a double fly stitch, I think. Um, so my plan totally is to finish this this year, of course. It'll happen. It'll happen. Um, it didn't take long to get this much done. I'm really looking forward to it. I love this kind of stitching. This is the kind of stitching that's very hard for me to put down. Just these little bands, every one feels like a little finish and they only take, you know, a band like this takes 20 minutes. It's fun. So I love that. I love the drawn thread. It's my favorite. Um, so after that, I decided to put some work in on Shroomhilda. This um, chart is going to be passed on to someone else after I'm done. So I do want to get it done early in the year. I did do a little bit of work, but not a huge amount. This is the bottom half. And you'll probably be able to see. Yeah. So it's obviously just this part here and some of this bottom part here. And there she is. She's coming along. She'll get there. Um, there's a lot of spaces in here for beads. There's quite a lot of beads on her. She's quite blingy. Um, oh, by the way, this fabric is a 32 count, something like natural linen. I don't know exactly. It just came from my mum's stash. Um, there's my anthropomorphic dog needle minder to go on my anthropomorphic mushroom chart. Uh, and the fabric for this one is 32 count sunflower seed, dower quality linen from Legacy. It's just the cord for linen. Legacy linen by Access Commodities. 32 count and I'm just using one strand of the cord for MPI silks. Um, so the coverage, you know, you can see it is patchy, but it sort of gives it a samplery look. Looks like a sampler. See if you look up here. It is patchy, but it looks like a sampler. I'm, I'm not... I ain't mad. I ain't mad. I like it. Um, then on the 17th of the month, as I told you, I've been doing Year of Starts, and on the 17th I decided to start another drawn thread piece, and it was this. As you can see, I finished it. This is called The Holly and the Ivy, um, by the drawn thread. It's stitched on some sort of 36 count natural linen I had in my stash. Um, it came as a kit with all the silks, um, but the fabric that came in the kit, the call for fabric, was this. 32 count tumbleweed. I think it's showing up a bit lighter for you than it is in real life. It's quite dark. And I was really worried that some of these greens were not going to show up. When I did a floss toss, I don't know how well you can see, all of these leaves are made of a dark green and a light green. And the light green just completely disappeared into this fabric. So I swapped it out for this natural looking one and I'm so happy with it, I love it. Um, the verse around the outside says, Bring in the holly, the ivy, the pine, the spruce and the fir tree together entwine. And it's so pretty. And there are beads in there, but it's very sort of minimalistic. Yeah, you can see a few beads. Not many. It's very nice. I'm very happy with it. I'm not much into Christmas stitching, really, but um, I enjoy doing this and I like the finished product. So I might even display it one <coughs> next year. <coughs> I'm getting the coughs, just a minute. My water's all the way over there. I've actually set myself up a stitching spot. I got my chair, my dad helped me move it in. Let me see if I can turn this so you can see. Ta-da, look at that, a stitchy spot right near the window. Lots of natural light. Um, my Lowry stand, my hot light. Oh, and up there is a lot of finishes I strung up. I'm going to string up some more finishes behind me here as well, but I just haven't done it yet. Not yet. Um, so after I finished the Holly and the Ivy, 
I decided it's time to do a restart on this. This is Trade Winds by Teresa Wensler. It came to me as a full kit. Um, and the linen it came with, well, it's a 27 count even weave. Ta-da! Oh, there's a needle in there. It's a pretty good needle too, I should save it. Okay, 27 count even weave and this is how much I got done. Unfortunately, if you look at the chart, the borders are very wide. And I did some calculation and I figured that the borders are going to come to there and I'm only going to have two inches for framing on each side, which is okay. I could have, I could have lived with that. Um, and I had made a huge mistake somewhere in this water and I looked at it for an hour. This was in Mania when I stitched on this last. I looked at it for an hour and I kind of figured out what it was. I think I'd swapped two colours because the last time I worked on this before Mania was 10 years ago. Um, and so I knew I had to unpick about half, about that much water, like from there on. And I didn't want to. So <laughs> when I made my Christmas in July order from Picture This Plus, I ordered a piece of 28 count Lugana in the colour Ancient and I made a little restart on this. As you can see, I've just started doing the outline of the arch. There's my mermaid needle minder. And I think this will look fantastic. Fantastic. I'm so happy with this fabric. I'm really glad with my choice to restart because I think this fabric will be incredible. So. I did, I did a small piece of work on this, but I didn't do too much because this won't be on my year of whips this year and I'm just not really motivated to work on it at the moment. It took me about two and a half, maybe three hours to do that much. I don't know. It was just trouble for me. Just trouble, wasn't in the mood, didn't spend too much time on it. Um, and the last thing I did in the year, I think pretty much, was I worked on And A Forest Group. I've taken it out of the Q-snaps because I need to move the Q-snaps. And you get a chance to see the whole thing. Isn't it gorgeous? Just beautiful. Um, the last thing I worked on was this tree, which I believe is the tree of knowledge of good and evil. And I think I did that little tree there. So I know I've mentioned that I am doing this as a stitch along with my mother. Her Instagram handle is motif by hand. My Instagram handle is Tashich. Um, and we're supposed to be doing two motifs a week, sometime on the weekend. Um, we started in May. My mum has not been keeping up, <laughs> um, but I have pretty well. I've missed a few weekends, of course, for Christmas and so on. And, you know, moving house and other commitments. But I love this. It's gorgeous. So the actual, the trunk of the giant tree in the middle actually starts right here. So I'm pretty much done, almost done, with a quarter. I have to work on this tomorrow. I'll be doing a couple of motifs up here. I think next weekend I'll be finished with the third page and that'll basically be a quarter done. So that's good. I started it in May, so it only took me seven months. <laughs> seven months to do a quarter of it. Yeah, so I think that'll be probably a 2020 finish. That's all right. I don't mind. I like working on this. I'm deliberately slowing myself down because of this um, stitch along thing but at least I'm getting consistent progress if I was working on this regularly I'd probably do half a page burn out and not touch it for six months so I think this incremental measured progress is actually pretty good so I'll be working on that tomorrow as well um, and that was no that wasn't it for the year on Christmas Day I had a new start um, but it's not a stitching start it is crochet look at that this is going to be a blanket and it's a big one. It's um, for a king size bed. Yeah, so it's wide, across, wide, wide enough to go across a king size bed. Um, and obviously it will be long enough when I finish it, but I'm not finished yet. Um, yeah, it is called the Hydrangea Stripe Blanket. Beautiful colours, right? This isn't all the colours, there are more colours. Um, Attic 24 is where the pattern is from. The pattern is free on this website, attic24.typepad.com. And it's called the Hydrangea Stripe Blanket. Um, you can buy this bundle of 15 balls of wool. Um, there's a link on the website where you buy this. It comes from the UK, 
postage is pretty affordable. My mum actually got me the wool um, because I'm doing the quilt in king size. I needed two packages of wool. Um, yeah, I have not done crochet very much in my life. I've made a few granny squares now and then, but that's it. This pattern is really easy to follow. I had no problems. Um, yeah, lots of fun. Look at the colours. Oh, so pretty. There are 15 colours. And they're good colours. I love it. My mum's made this quilt before. Um, and she's made a few others from the attic with the attic wool and stuff. So she's the one who enabled me for this. Thanks, mum. But I love it. It's so pretty. I like how it looks like little circles. The yellow circle, the green circle. Yeah, I love it. Um, I haven't worked on this since the new year, I don't think. The problem is it's hot and working on this, it's all sort of piled on my lap and it feels like I'm wearing a blanket. And as it gets bigger, that's going to get worse. So I might not do a lot on this until the weather starts to get cooler, but we'll see. I do like it and I want to work on it. It's a nice thing to do when you're watching TV that you want to concentrate on because you don't have to look at that as much as you have to look at your stitching, so that's nice. So 1st of January, new year, new start, Villa Mirabilia. Look at her, look at her, she's so gorgeous. Um, and I've worked on her quite a lot. I haven't worked on her yet today. Oh, okay. Yeah, so this is four days work, um, about 15, 14, 15 hours of work. And this is how much I've done. I'm a very slow stitcher. So as you can probably see, this part of her bodice and the yellow skirt and her arm, her hand just laying there. And I'm doing her hand two over one tenth stitch. And I'm not that happy with it. It looks a bit messy. But from far away, it looks fine. You'll never tell. Um, yeah, it's so pretty. The colours on this. Gorgeous. I, mean, I don't do a lot of things with vibrant colours like this, so it's really fun to work on. But I feel like I'm reaching the end of my sort of rotation on this. I burn out on projects like this after probably four or five days. So I still have to finish her hand there. Then I'm going to do some of this pink that's draped over her arm. I'll do that tonight and possibly tomorrow, and then I'm just going to put her away. Um, she won't be one on my ear of whips either, so I don't anticipate getting a lot of progress done on her, unfortunately. Um, that's all the stitching I have. I need to make another video, I'll probably do it in the morning, um, that will be about my year of whips lineup. I am going to do year of whips this year. I have 24 pieces, oh, plus my, plus the mystery start that we have to do um, to represent soulful stitching. Um, so there will be 25 altogether. Um, but I'm going to make that video in the morning, tomorrow morning probably, because I just don't want to do another video tonight. I'm getting tired. Tim's already gone off to work, so it's 10.15 at night, Friday night. Friday! Um, okay, let's talk about haul and presents. I got a present from my grandmother. Thanks, Nana. Um, she sent me some fun stitchy things. Um, she sent me this book. That I was just reading from before. It's purple. She sent me a purple pencil case. Look at that, they match. Um, she sent me a chart. This is Papillon Creations, The Bard of Avon. And look down there. It's um, obviously Shakespeare inspired sampler. It says, To thine own self be true. And it's so pretty, am I right? So pretty. And in this, she sent a lot of little goodies. She sends some floss, very colourful floss. This is Carrie's Creations hand dye floss and the colour I think is Lumiere de Cheryl. And check those colours. Oh my god. Oh my god, so pretty. So, it, so gorgeous. I love these colours. Beautiful. I wonder if I could do this in those colours. I probably could. Um, yeah, and I think there's four skeins of that. That's pretty good. She also sent me a needle winder. I love the flower fairies. She might have made this for me actually. It's got the giant magnets on the back. <laughs> um, yeah, I love flower fairies. I already have one other flower fairy needle minder that I made myself from the pork chop show. So there's another one. I love her. Um, a purple highlighter. It's one of those erasable friction ones. 
there. What else? Oh, a star detailer. I'm sure you guys have seen these popping up on other people's floss tube videos. Um, basically, you, when your thread at the back of your work is too small to weave under a few stitches, you can use this, push, push this under your stitches, and then catch your thread and pull this back through. Um, yeah, that's what that's for. And a pair of scissors on a, on a little, whatever one of these is called. What is this called? That's very useful. And everything's purple. Purple isn't my favourite colour. It used to be when I was younger. I used to, when I went to boarding school, I used to go to my grandma's house nearly every weekend. And we were like besties. <laughs> we were best friends. Um, so yeah, purple used to be my favourite colour. And I still love purple. Everything around here is purple. Um, and the pièce de résistance, a bag, a stitch in time, look at that, oh my gosh, how cool is that, how cool is that guys, I'm going out to, um, Canberra Cross Stitches Northside meetup tomorrow, I might put my stuff in this bag and show it off, I love it, love it, yeah, and now I don't have to stitch it because I can look at it whenever I want, <laughs> I would never stitch this. I would never stitch this one. I'm not insane. Come on. <laughs> um, yeah, so that's all for my grandmother. Thank you, Nana. Um, uh, oh, I'm dropping everything. Okay. My sister gave me a very, very generous gift certificate to 123 Stitch. So I've ordered a few charts that I can't find on other websites and a lot of supplies for, <clears throat> for things that I want to start this year. Excuse me. <coughs> so I know there'll be a delay in that arriving. That's what happens when you order from Stitching Bits and Bobs. And she tells you that, and that's okay. I'm okay with it. I know there's a delay ahead of ordering, and I still decide to order, so it's alright. <coughs> um, I got my fabric of the month from Leslie Under the Sea Fabrics. Uh, I think this is for December. Yeah, I think so. Um, the colour is called Aztec. Oh, everything's, um, I'm getting, I've got a light right here because my face is all in shadow. There we go, Aztec. Linen 32 count, 18 by 27. And that is a gorgeous colour. Um, it looks much more orange in real life, quite orange. Um, it's looking a bit more golden on the camera, but it's orange. And it's so nice. I don't know yet what I'll stitch on here, but I know I'll find something. Amazing, amazing, amazing. Um, and the last piece of haul that I got was a kit that I ordered on eBay. And it was because I saw, oh, this is bad. I should have looked it up. I can't remember who finished this. I, someone, someone on Instagram finished this and I loved it. It looks gorgeous. Um, I remember seeing this project when I was stitching 10 years ago and not being able to afford it because I was a very poor student working night shifts then um, paying my mortgage <laughs> it was hard um, and so I saw this someone finish this and it was gorgeous and it reminded me how much I love it so I bought it and it was quite affordable really now it's great it's crazy to think that before I wouldn't have been able to afford $40 for a chart and here it is Red Mermaid by RTO yeah, um, <clears throat> it came from Russia. I love it. I love it. Um, the finish that I saw of this was so gorgeous. I'm dying to start it, actually. <laughs> but I won't. I already have at least one mermaid on the go. <laughs> so, I think that's all I have to say for tonight. Um, I'm going to make my Year of Whips video tomorrow. Um, in that video, I might also talk about my other 2018 plans. Or maybe not. I think I'll just make that video Year of Whips. I do have plans for 2018 um, outside of Year of Whips and that's mainly starts. <laughs> I'm obsessed with starts at the moment. Um, I've been sort of planning what I need to buy to start some things so I've got a shopping list and I've got at least 22 things I want to start. Um, like now. <laughs> um, I need to stitch faster and stop shopping. Yeah. Um, so yeah, N next video will be Year of Whips, the one after I'll talk about 
starts and stuff and hopefully I'll have some more progress to show you. So anyway, thank you for listening to me for 30 minutes and 8 seconds. <laughs> I will see you next time. Happy stitching. Bye bye.